Hey everybody, welcome back to another great week in the Word of God. I'm so excited you're here. My name's David Breed and we're gonna dive into the Word of God together. Are you hungry for the Word of God? I am so hungry and thirsty for God's Word. We have been talking about strong and sound mind. It's so important for us to have a strong and sound mind. Paul, we went over, Paul had a lot to say about this. Jesus had a lot to say last week. The scientists even agreed with Jesus last week in week two, that when we speak, it affects different organs of our bodies. And so we really need to know what's going in here that'll affect our thinking, and then our mouth will be right. Amen. Well, let's dive into the confession of faith, who God made us to be, and let's get started. Say this after me. I'm quick, I'm sharp, I'm bright, I'm good looking, I'm strong, I'm healed, I'm very rich. I'm a major blessing. Let's say it again. I am a major blessing. Say, I'm a soul winner. That's right. And I am a disciple maker. Well, week one was incredible. How to control your thoughts. We went over to Philippians. We think on things that are good, pure, perfect, lovely, and of a good report. It's so important to keep our minds strong, especially the environment we live in now in this world. It's going nuts, but we can have a strong, peaceful mind. Remember, it started this whole series out in 1 Timothy. God has not given us a spirit of fear, but of power, love, and a sound, disciplined mind. When our mind is in the right place, our believing will be in the right place. Right thinking, right believing. And of course, we said before, our believer, this is our believer here, our heart and our mouth, that's where our faith connects, but our thinking has to be clear and right. So let's dive right into our uh, what we're going to be talking about today. I really was uh, praying for you guys and I really felt the direction of going on this way. The mind of Christ, having the strong mind of Jesus Christ. Jesus Christ's mind was strong. No matter what came against him, his thought life, his heart life, his whole life was geared to the discipline. And here on the mind, you know, it took me years to get my mind messed up. I'm telling you, I was really messed up when I came to the Lord. And the Lord started dealing with me about correcting this and being attentive to the things I think about. That keeps us in peace. What did the Bible say? The Bible says <laughs> we keep our minds stayed on Him and he will keep us in perfect peace. So this strong, sound mind subject is very important for us. Over here in Proverbs 4.20, as I was meditating and thinking about things, the Lord really camped on this scripture. We know this. We're going to talk about the mind today and a strong, sound mind. My son, pay attention to my words. Paying attention and be willing to learn, and be willing to learn. There's a whole sermon there. My son, pay attention to my words, and be willing to learn. I don't need to slap us around a little bit. Open your ears to my sayings. Keep them open, guys. Do not let them escape. Don't let them escape from your sight. Keep them in the center of your heart. So these words, as they're going in, we need to pay attention to God's words, whether it's, it's the Bible, His Word speaking to us, or personally. When we're asking for wisdom from Him in our prayer times, personally, we got to stay in there and be attentive to those words. Um, over here at, at Faith Outreach Church, just up the street, they have some deer. And this mama deer had two baby, like twins. They're really cute. But anytime I'm on there, I'm walking around or everything, her, she's attentive to watch her kids. She's attentive. Is something happening in the brush? She's attentive. The birds are flying over. She's attentive of protection. We need to be attentive and protecting our minds. As she was protecting her fawns or two fawns, we need to be protecting our minds from all the different negative things of this world. Verse 22, for they, those words, are life to those who find them and healing and health to all their flesh. Watch over your heart and this is the same the Lord said, put your mind in here too. Watch over your mind and your heart with all diligence. From out of it flow the springs of life. So being attentive and watching over our minds is so crucial. Are you listening? It's so crucial. Um, uh, a, a gentleman just told me the other day, uh, listen, I haven't been able to sleep well. And he talked to the Lord about it. He said, Lord, I haven't been able to sleep well. And, he, and the Lord showed him what he's watching before he's going to bed. 
which his mind is on, has been troubling him. And he just said, okay, no problem. I'm going to stop that. We need to be careful of what we watch and what we put in here and what we put in here. Amen. Because to have a strong sound, I'm going to add another word here, strong, peace, peaceful, peaceful sound mind. It's really important. The Lord really dealt with me about watching my mind and I have to stir myself up like we're stirring each other up. I have to stir myself up along these lines. Let's look at a miracle of Jesus, Jesus Christ. And we're going to look at the controlling powers of the mind in this verse. And the outcome is going to be a peaceful mind. You know, Jesus had a lot of miracles and we're going to be going over to uh, the demon possessed man in Luke chapter eight. If you have your Bibles, turn over to Luke chapter eight. If you're writing notes, Luke chapter 8. And this is the demon possessed man. We know that, that, that Jesus came to him. He was possessed. We're going to look at the, a little bit of the process. We're not going to go through all the scriptures today. But the main thing is this. His mind was chaotic. His mind wasn't in the right place. And the devil was playing with his mind. Thank God we're Christians and we have authority and we can say, no, we have a peaceful mind. And listen to me. Well, Kaba so blamanichiki, Holy Ghost, thank you. Say this: We have a peaceful mind. I have a peaceful mind. I have a peaceful mind. You know, the devil has no power over us. He's been defeated. I am not afraid of him, and you're not afraid of him because Jesus whipped him big time. So we can have a peaceful mind. But this man needed help, and so Jesus cast the demon off of him. But I believe there was some trouble there. And that's what he was entertaining wrong thoughts. You listening to me. That's why we need to keep this thing stayed. Like we said in, in the first broadcast, we think on things that are good, pure, perfect, lovely. Is it good that I'm thinking about? Is it pure? Is it perfect? Is it lovely? Over here, let's go over here to Luke chapter 8, 26. Um, so they arrived in the region of the Chesaris across the lake of Galilee. As Jesus was climbing out of the boat, a man who was possessed by demons came out to meet him. For a long time, he had been homeless and naked, living in the tombs the tombs, different tombs outside the town. Just that bottom part, for a long time he had been homeless and naked. We can see he was, he was, in the, he was not in the right mind. Amen. And that's why we have a strong and sound mind. We know which is good, which is bad. We know poverty has no place in our lives. No place, no place in here, no place in here, no place out here. Amen. So let me, let me read that again. So they arrived in the region of the centuries across the Lake of Galilee. As Jesus was climbing out of the boat, a man who was possessed by demons came out to meet him for a long time. He had been homeless for a long time. He had been naked living in the tombs outside the town. You know, that word tombs right there is plural. So his mind was so scattered. Where should I leave? His mind wasn't in the right place. But thank God the power of God was available because Jesus Christ is on the scene. He's on the scene in our lives today. He is with you right now and he's with me. He said he'd never leave us or forsake us. And thank God for that. We know this story real well. We know that he cast out the demons. And let's continue on and look at the outcome. And this is what the Lord really put on my heart. The outcome of this healing is really crucial. Again, we're talking about the mind, having a strong and sound mind. Uh, let's go down to verse 35. And people came out to see what happened. This guy is healed. What in the world's happening here? They came to Jesus and found the man whom the demons had got out, sitting at Jesus' feet, clothed in his, what kind of mind? Right mind, mentally healthy, and they were frightened. Another translation is they write in a sound mind, line up with the uh, first Timothy there. We have not given a spirit of fear, but of power, love, and a sound mind. But here it's interesting. Uh, let's read it one more time. We really need to meditate on these things to get them in our heart and our, 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 couple of cell, our minds. Uh, and people came out to see what happened. So here they come, all the people. You telling me this guy got healed? There's no way. He's just tearing things apart. He's living in tombs. They came to Jesus, found the man whom the demons had gone out, sitting at Jesus' feet, at his feet, clothed. He's been naked for a long time. 
(laughs) and in his right mind, mentally healthy. Jesus knows the importance of your mind. So does the devil. We can and will guard our minds. The Bible says we have the mind of Christ, the mind of Jesus. We used to have the mind of the world, so to speak, or the mind of the devil, but now we have the mind of Christ, the mind from heaven that thinks about heavenly things that are strong, mighty, holy, full of love. You know, if you're having a hard time, God loves you. We can't get enough of that. God loves you. We can't get enough of that. I can't get enough of that. I know you can't. That alone sets our mind in a whole different arena of God's love, His care, His provision. Hey, we got to shake this world off of us sometimes and get in that arena with God where He loves us and He is wanting to show us our future and the love He has and the future He has and the prosperity that He has. And and if you have a business, the, the business ventures you're going to go on. If you're retired, more things for God to do because now you're in the wisdom years where you can impart what you've learned from God and what you've learned from business and that authority and that prayer life that you have elevated. Hopefully you've elevated over the years. That's what the younger generation want. They want the real deal and we have got it. Amen. Well, now God's given us a sound mind. And it's interesting because this next verse, uh, we'll we'll jump down to verse 39. Now he is wanting, this demon-possessed man is no longer, he's in a sound mind. All he wants to do is follow the Lord. I would too. Peaceful mind, restful mind, strong mind, sound mind, disciplined mind. And so what is a strong mind? It's a peaceful, strong mind. Verse 39 This is what Jesus said, because he's wanting to follow Jesus. Jesus says, no, go back to your family and tell them everything God has done for you. Go back to your family. The ones that they won't, I mean, they won't believe it. (laughs) Go back to your family and share with them because they will listen. There was unction there for them to listen. And we need to follow that unction too for our own families. There'll be a right time. You will have a knowing what to say and when to say it. And God will give you those words. Now go back to your family and tell them everything God has done for you. So we went all through town proclaiming the great things Jesus had done for him. He is a new man. (laughs) Just because he got this right. And thank God as believers, we don't have to think about the devil. We just say, get out. He has to flee from us. Done deal. But we need to keep an eye on this, right? That Nicomas, Levan, Kama, Kama, Kavana, Matana. I remember Joyce Meyer uh, a few years back talked about the, the battlefield, the battlegrounds up here, which is true. But we've already won the victory. Jesus Christ is already, he is the Prince of Peace. Amen. He's given us, and he told us that. The peace I give you. The world hasn't got this kind of peace. This is perfect peace. Amen. I'm going to read that again. Now go back to your family and tell them everything God has done for you. So we went all through town proclaiming the great things. That's what we need to do. Jesus had done for him. What do you think? When we look at this verse, he went around proclaiming the greatness of Jesus. And I'd say this as I was meditating on this. Jesus gave him his mind back. (laughs) <laughs> now he has a strong, sound, peaceful mind, and that is the mind of Christ. Hey, listen to me. That's the mind of Christ. I, I, the great things God did for him, I have peace now. That's what I had when I came to the Lord. I know you did too. It was like, oh man, the peace that came over me and the peace that I've never had before in my life, God was there. It's so good. So let's wrap it up with four powerful scriptures about the mind from the New Testament. 1 Corinthians 2.16 says this, For who has known, and we're going to go over two different translations here, For who has known or understood the mind, the counsels, and purposes of the Lord, so as to guide and instruct Him, and give the Lord knowledge. But we have the mind of Christ, the Messiah, and we do hold the thoughts, the feelings, and purposes of His heart. He loves us. Amen. We can be thinking about how much He loves us. Um, another translation says this, For who can know God's or Lord's thoughts? 
Who knows enough to teach him? Absolutely nobody. <laughs> but we understand these things because we have the mind of Christ. We understand his heart by his word. We understand this is your book of life right here. This, is, this answers every question you have about life right here. Stay in the New Testament. Amen. Stay in the New Testament, especially the epistles. But this right here is your book of life for you. This is your food. This is your energy. You listen to me. This is your energy. And this is what we proclaim. Amen. So listen, uh, let's uh, go down to uh, Colossians 3, 2 for the sake of time. Set your mind and keep focused habitually on things above the heavenly things. Man, that'll preach. Not on the things on this earth, which only have temporal value. Set your mind and keep focused habitually on the things above the heavenly things. And we have that. We have the fruit of the Spirit on the inside. We have angels around us. Those are heavenly. I mean, we have Jesus with us. We have the Father with us. We've got the Holy Ghost here on the earth to help us. Wow. Boy, we've got a lot of heavenly things to think about. Amen. And know that He's always with us. It's huge. Uh, Romans 12, 2. And be not conformed to this world any longer with its superficial values and customs, but be transformed and progressively changed as you mature spiritually. We need to keep moving up spiritually. We need to be wiser spiritually. We need to use, know how to be skillful with our authority. We need to be skillful with authority and prayer. We need to be skillful at the Word of God. We need to be skillful and calm and relaxed and strong. Have a strong, sound mind. Amen. Let's go on. By renewing your mind, focusing on godly values and ethical attitudes so you can prove for yourselves what the will of God is. Come on. That's awesome. That which is good and acceptable and perfect in his plan and purpose for you. In his plan. He's got a great plan for you. Hallelujah. Don't try to figure it out. <laughs> It's better than you think. Are you listening to me? It's better than you think. That's a good message right there, Lord. It's better. Your, your future is better than you think. The plans he has is better than you think. So I, I, that's what we have to change this to get on his, his avenue, his road. Amen. Uh, the Amplified Classic says this, do not be conformed to this world or this age fashioned after and adapted to this external superficial customs, but be transformed, changed by the entire renewal of your mind. Woo! Wow! That is so good. <laughs> the entire renewal of your mind. Let's go on. By its new ideas and its new attitude. Man, that's so good. I love that. That's so good. Changed by our mind. By its new ideals and its new attitudes that you may prove for yourselves. You'll see that this is going to come to pass. What is that good and acceptable and perfect will of God? Even the thing which is good and acceptable and perfect in His sight for you. In His sight for you. He has so many good things in His sight for you. Amen. Glory to God. And 1 Peter 1.13 says this. This is pretty incredible right here. Therefore... Gird up your loins. <laughs> Keep yourself clear and strong and happy. Amen. Be sober and rest your hope fully. There's, there's a key right there. Rest your hope fully upon the grace that is to be brought to you at the revelation of Jesus Christ. What is that? What, is this? what, is this? what does this say right here? You're probably thinking, what does this mean? It's basically saying we need to get all the junk out of our mind and out of our way so that we can keep running our race with Jesus Christ. He's got a victory. He's got a victory around every door, every avenue, every wall, every day, every minute, every minute. I like that. Every minute he has victory. Don't you love that? Every minute we have victory because we're believers. Come on, preach the fire. Amen. Hallelujah. Wow. This is so good. We need to spend some time thinking about scriptures that renew our minds with the truth about what God says about us, about how much he loves us. That'll change our thinking big time to know that we're valued, that we're valued. We have value. He loves us so much. He created us the way we are with wonderful personalities. Well, I just, I'm Irish or this. Hey, listen, 
He loves you. And he loves every part about you. Amen. And you get with him. If you have some struggles in certain areas, he is there to help you all the time. <laughs> the Old Testament, they didn't have that. They had to go with the priest, blah, 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 prophet. We've got him 24 hours a day, seven days a week. Glory to God. Let's spend some time with him. Well, I think that's, that's good. Say this after me. I have a strong mind. I have a strong mind. I have a peaceful mind. I have a peaceful mind. Boy, that right there just sets you free. And say this after me, I have the mind of Christ. I have the mind of Christ. Well, glory to God. Guys, thanks so much. Stay strong, strong, strong in God and His Word. You have a strong and a sound mind through Jesus Christ because you have the mind of Christ. Amen. Well, glory to God. Until next time, guys, have a great week coming up. If you have any questions, just email us. Hey, listen, Carol Joy gets on every Monday when we're in town and she is your prayer coach. She has been going places in prayer, guys. I'm telling you, it's like nobody's business. It's absolutely amazing. And look at the links below. Lots of free materials online for you. We love you so much. God loves you. And let's say for the kingdom, because we do everything for the kingdom. Amen. On the count of three, let's say for the kingdom. One, two, three, for the kingdom. And remember, you have the mind of Christ. You have the victory. Oh my gosh, it overcomes the world. You are the head, not the tail. You are above and not beneath. Everything you do is prosperous. Amen. And there's so much more. God bless you. Have the best week ever. We love you so much in Jesus' name.